What is happening guys? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. And this is my bow build. Now the bow is a weapon that I really fell in love with uh, moving into the late game. Early on in Monster Hunter World I wasn't really a fan of it. I found that I was constantly out of stamina trying to use the bow. I didn't feel like I could do a lot of damage. And as you move towards the late game and you're able to really stack on skills to reach the higher levels of them, things like Constitution, Stamina Surge, the bow really comes into its own as an incredibly enjoyable weapon and one that is capable of doing devastating amounts of damage when wielded properly. So, moving into the build itself, things are pretty straightforward. The first thing I want to point out, of course, is the bow we're using. We only got to worry about three different types of coating. Paralysis, of course, which is incredibly situational. Power coating, which is going to be our main damage boost. And, of course, when we run out of that, we swap to close range coating. Now, just to demonstrate the difference between power and close range coating, as you can see from back here, with power coating, we're hitting from 22. If we go to close range, we're hitting for 19. You can see if we inch back even a little bit further, you can see close range is now not doing anything. Uh, all those charge shots actually work still. But, you know, we're hitting two on that basic shot, whereas with the power coating, we're still hitting fine. Even a little bit further back, and you can see we're now out of range. So all the way back here, you can still get some damage in if you charge up all those shots. But right here, no range. Whereas power, we are still in range. And that's all it really is. I mean, the damage difference isn't much. Um, so, you know, only having 50 power coating isn't a huge concern. Like I said, we're looking at 22 on a base on that. Whereas we're hitting 19 on a base on that. So not a major difference there. Um, and this bow build in particular is going to work around basically maximizing the damage of your normal shots. So getting in lots of normal shots, constantly using our charging sidestep, and then right when we get low on stamina, finish things off with a Dragon Piercer for high damage. Now there's a couple things on this build that are going to make it even more potent than most bow users can be. Namely, one particular gem known as Mighty Bow. Now the Mighty Bow decoration is quite rare, it's a rarity 8, so it's going to be hard to find one, and alternatively, the only other way to get Mighty Bow is through the 4-piece bonus of the Legiana set. But just to show what it's capable of here, typically with Bow we shoot 1 arrow, 2 arrows, 3 arrows. Going with Mighty Bow, we can go 1, 2, 3, 3. So basically, it's going to give our Bow a 4th level of charge, and this also applies to other things as well. For example, this is a level 2 or a level 3 charge, which is typically the max with your bow. As you can see, we hit crits for 104. If we go up to the level 4 charge, see we're hitting crits for 108. And this works very well with the charging sidestep, whereas typically we're at level 2, we're at level 3, now we're at level 4. And we can stay at that level 4 and maintain that level 4 bonus basically allowing us to do a lot more damage with the bow by having that higher level of charge available. Uh, but enough about that, let's jump on into the gear and the decorations and show you what makes this build what it is. Now the basis of this build isn't really Mighty Bow though. The basis is going to be Crit and Elementless. And the first thing you'll notice we have here is our weapon, the Sarah Coilbender. Now you get this bow going down the Diablos tree, and a lot of people find this bow unattractive initially because it has negative affinity, in particular negative 30% affinity. Now we've augmented it with an affinity increase to bring that up to negative 20, but the thing that makes this bow appealing is the high base damage on it. We're sitting at 264 attack on it, even though we have that negative 20% affinity. Now we can work in things like critical eye gems or weakness exploit to combat that affinity. And more importantly, we're going to be pushing this damage even further. So right now it says we're at 264. That's not actually accurate. 264 is just the, the, the sheet damage on that weapon. We're actually doing 298. Almost 30 damage more than what the weapon's showing because of the elementless jewel. Now we're going to go into the decorations later, but that's the basic idea here. We're going to take the strongest raw damage bow, augment it further with elementless, and then work in some positive affinity to offset the negative affinity. As you can see, I have a bunch of critical eye, so my raw affinity is only at minus 5%, and that's not even including things like weakness exploit. Uh, but moving on from there, Fitness Charm. Now, Fitness Charm is probably the single most important thing to have when you're playing with a bow. Constitution is absolutely fantastic. 
And I find that level 3 is enough that you can get by. If you want more, you can swap from your eye patch to a Kadachi Helm here to put you at level 5. But I find level 3 to be doable. And just to show you exactly how useful fitness is, if we take out our bow here and we start doing dash shots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we go and we take that charm off. And another thing, keep in mind right now, we have very, very low stamina right now. You know, we don't have the uh, the food buff that's going to put our stamina up higher. Without constitution at all. One, two, three. Three versus five. And that's only with the level three. Uh, obviously, going up to level five will reduce that even further to the point where it kind of gets ridiculous and you can basically permadash. Uh, but that's a different style build altogether. Level 3 is basically going to be suitable for our needs. Moving on from there, Dragon King Eye Patch. Now, I would consider this to be 100% mandatory for this build. Even if you don't get any more weakness exploit, just having two points is going to give you the 30% affinity against weak points, and that's going to help to offset the negative affinity that we have on our Diablos bow. Even without augmenting the bow, even with nothing else, that 30% will allow you to baseline at 0% affinity and just have raw damage. Uh, moving down from there, the Kaiser Male B. Now this is an easy pickup. We have two points of special ammo boost. Now there's a couple skills that can boost Dragon Piercer. Special ammo boost and then piercing shot. Now each tick in this is roughly 10% on the damage of Dragon Piercer. Uh, very similar to having Piercing Shot, which is also about a 10% boost on the Dragon Piercer. Those do stack, so if you have all three of them, you're sitting at a solid 30%. But this is probably the easiest way to obtain that quick 20% boost is through the Kaiser Male Beta. Now, Special Ammo Boost can be found in a Size 1 Decoration. It is very hard to come by. I have not found it so far, and I have a ton of different rare decorations. But if you have a couple of those... Feel free to take those decorations, drop those into our bow decoration slots, and boom, you got your 20% bonus right there. And in that case, we wouldn't run the Kaiser Mail. If we have that, we're going to go for the Nirgagante Mail Beta instead to give us two points of stamina surge as well as a size 2 decoration slot, which we could then slot in some other spicy decorations. Uh, moving on from there, though, we're going to pick up the Kaiser Vambrace Beta. And the main reason for this is to get our third point in weakness exploit, bringing us on up to what will be that 50%. And on top of that, we have a level 2 gem slot, which we're going to want. Down from there, near Gigante Coil, and we're going for the Alpha, you may notice here, instead of Beta, where we typically go for the gem slots. And that's because instead of having the level 2 gem slot, which we could get right here, we're instead going to pick up that point in Stamina Surge, because Stamina is so important to the bow gameplay. Um, stamina Surge, coincidentally, also fits into a level 2 gem slot, so if you were using this, you'd probably be running Stamina Surge in that slot anyway, so we might as well pick up the Alpha, picking up some nice attack boost along the way there as well. And then lastly, the Diablos Nero Greaves. Now, back with the Light Bowgun build, I talked about how you could run the Diablos Nero Greaves, or alternatively, the Lava Sea Elf Greaves. Uh, for my bow style of play, I find myself doing a lot of normal shots, a lot more than I do power shots, and hence I want the normal shot boost I get out of these versus the power shot boost I get out of these. However, very similar to the light bow gun build, this is purely personal preference. If you find yourself constantly in close range spamming out those power shots, feel free to pick up the Lava Sea Off Greaves instead. Now moving on to our decorations, this is where things get spicy. The main thing you're going to need to make this build work is this, Elementless Jewel, which provides a non-elemental boost. That is what's bringing our damage up to 298. These are actually fairly easy to come by. I think I've probably milled it away, probably six or seven of these, so it shouldn't be too hard to farm one up. Moving down to more decorations, Mighty Bow Jewel. Now this thing is a rarity 8. It's going to take a while to get it. If you find one, hands down, biggest DPS increase you will see with your bow slot that sucker on it. Aside from there, we have a bunch of expert jewels here, and that's just giving us a bunch of affinity to bring us to negative 5, help offset that negative affinity that we have on the Diablos bow. And then, of course, we have a weakness exploit, which will put us into a positive affinity range, allowing us to get crits. Now, you'll also notice I have a critical jewel too. This is basically just a filler. In a perfect world, if I had all the decorations I'd want, I'd be running two special ammo boost gems up there, 
Instead, I would be having the Nier Gigante male on here, and then for the level 2 slot here and the level 2 slot in Nier Gigante, I could run a piercing shot up and a power shot up, giving me normal, piercing, power, elementless, mighty bow, and special ammo boost for the equivalent of a god tier bow build. Now that is ultimately what you should aim to work towards. It of course will take quite a while to farm all those up. This is something that you could achieve, well, minus the, the mighty bow. If we took this out, we'd be looking at a fairly easy setup to achieve. Uh, as I mentioned, it's important that this is a filler. You don't need a critical jewel there. You could run whatever you want. I could put in another piece of critical eye just to pull me down to a perfect 0% affinity. I could run a jumping jewel for more evasion. It's, it's just something to take up the slot while we try to hunt down something to further augment our uh, power shot and our piercing shot. But going all in all, we have critical eye level 4 right now giving us affinity and it's important to note that the biggest thing is having the weakness exploit if you have weakness exploit and you hit weak spots you're going to be canceling out the negative affinity of the diablos bow critical eye also helps to cancel that out meaning that with this all the way up we're looking at a 45 percent chance to crit into that positive range however you could alternatively stack up a bunch of attack grand four attack plus this Plus, going back to the uh, other piece of Nier Gigante, you'd be sitting up at that level 7, giving you 21 attack and 5% affinity, which would also be awesome. Uh, based on the last video, it sounds like a bunch of you guys use the dupe exploit to get a buttload of attack gems, so feel free to go crazy, slot all those suckers in, and go fuck yourself, as I say, my jealous self that didn't dupe those. But anyway, moving on from there, Constitution level 3, we of course get this from our neck piece. Uh, if you want, you can slot in more Constitution. As I mentioned, it is a level 2 size gem, so you could put that in place of the Critical Jewel, bring this up to 40%. We have some attack boost that's coming in via the pants. Non-elemental boost, the most important core thing here. Bow charge plus, obviously I've shown you what that's capable of. A point of stamina surge coming on in. Normal shots up, and then special ammo boost. So all in all, there's a lot that could make this build even more deadly, but even then, even without having special ammo via gems and having things like power shot up and pierce shot up via gems, we are still able to do absolutely staggering amounts of damage, which we're going to jump right to now and show you guys what this thing is capable of. So to show off the bow, we're going to be going after everyone's favorite monster, Da Bagel Goose. Now... Bagel Goose is a monster that I do think kind of instills fear in a lot of players, especially ones unfamiliar with Monster Hunter. You know, you're, you're going after like a Jagras or something, and then all of a sudden this B-52 bomber comes out of the air and blows up everything in your path. And like many, I was also afraid of the B-52 for a while. But then I fought him with the bow, and it was like my eyes had become opened. The bow takes the uh, the threat of the B-52 and makes it non-existent in the most amazing way possible. And honestly, like, after the first time that you fight a Bagel Goose using a, um, using a bow, like, you'll never use another weapon to fight it again. You just, you won't. Because the bow is so deliciously spicy at destroying this obnoxious monster that seems to come and interrupt every single high rank hunt I do. Hey buddy. Oh! <laughs> Look at all that damage! Now, the important thing is, while we got access to our uh, our power coding, make sure you're not just doing the regular fire. I know I talked about doing, like, you know, how we can go one, two, three, three. But you don't really want to try and do that while we still got power coding. Always try and get a dash shot off or a power shot just because you want to maximize how much oomph you're going to get out of your power codings. I'm gonna get back a little bit.
you get off me for a second? dead man it's it's freaking silly like some of y'all right now are probably like hold up that's bagel goose this this is the the massive threatening b-52 bomber that always comes after me that's how easy he falls to the bow and given it wasn't a tempered bagel goose but for those that are confused tempered doesn't really increase it doesn't increase the health it doesn't increase the defense temper just makes the monster hit harder and i think i think i use a potion let me see did i use a potion at all yeah so i used one mega potion right there so even if it was tempered it honestly wouldn't have really made a difference like at the end of the day when it comes to beefy boys like this that are extra long the bow is just a fantastic weapon choice you got tons of mobility along with it and it's really satisfying to play, especially when you hit those full body dragon piercers. So either way, guys, thanks for coming by. Hope you liked the new build. Uh, up next, I'm going to be doing a dual element, dual blades build. And then following up from that, I'll likely upload uh, charge blade followed by insect glaive. So either way, thanks for coming on by. And we will catch you guys with the next build video.